showing you how I put together my Alice Madness Returns classic look. Now, I apologize in advance because I did not get any sewing footage of this because I honestly hadn't decided if I wanted to do this or not yet, so it's just an FYI, there's no actual sewing. But I will be able to tell you where I got everything, what I used, what alterations to the pattern I made, all that good stuff. Um, so let's start off with the pattern. This is the pattern that I used. Again, everything will be linked down below. I did a size 14. Now, according to the actual pattern measurements, I fall in between a 6 and an 8, depending on which part you're looking at. But I really wanted this dress to be nice and loose. I didn't want a really tight fitting dress because that wouldn't be accurate to the thing. And yeah, you know. So I went with a size 14 even though my size for the pattern was technically a six. Um, the fabric that I used is not actually available anymore. Yeah, but I can recommend that you use like a Robert Kaufman Kona Cotton. They are really great and I actually did my 1950s Alice in Wonderland look with a color of that, so it would totally work for this one too, like 100%. That is also the fabric that I used for the apron itself. It was the Robert Kaufman, um, it was the white one. I'll link it down below. I have all the links to it and everything. Now, there are two things that I did completely leave off of this dress. And speaking of the actual dress part alterations, so I left off the collar, right? The bodice I made completely as it normally would have been made, according to the pattern. And the, um, what else did I have in the bodice? And I also altered the length of the skirt, which, to be honest, when you do that, you just kind of make the skirt the length that they have it, as long as you measure and that's the length that you want. And then just keep hemming it and cutting it until you get it to the exact length you want, in case you want it really short or something. I don't know, people be doing all sorts of stuff, so, yeah. Now, in case you guys need some help with sewing and you're, like, a new sewer, I have linked helpful videos to down below to be able to show you how to do, like, the darts, the puff sleeve, how to hem a perfect circle skirt, and then, no, yep, for the dress, that was all of them. I do have one for pockets for the apron later that I found really, really helpful because I hadn't done those kind of pockets outside of an apron before. Yeah. Now, I did decide to do, obviously, the lace, and the lace that I used, it's just kind of like this cheaper lace, but it's actually, it actually works really nice. I just exposed, as you can see in the pictures, just the bottom part of the lace to try and keep it as close to the actual dress as possible, because everybody loves accuracy, right? And then I did decide to do that, um line on the hem. I wasn't concerned about it being like super straight because I felt like this was a pretty, I don't know, nice grungy little piece and I didn't want that extra white line, you know, this stuff to be like super straight and perfect because I didn't feel like that was true to it at all. But in the original dress you can see that there is definitely this little white hem above the normal hem. Before you do this, by the way, you definitely want to interface that entire hemline. It will make this so much easier for you. And then you won't have to worry about pulling and puckering the fabric as you go around with it. And you can totally just use the needle that comes with this when you order it. Um, so the apron. The apron, for the apron, I kind of just took like an actual tank top that I wear, and then just sort of lined it up, and then used the skirt to just extend it. Made a little head hole, sewed them together, put it over my head, looked at it in the mirror, and then I just sort of measured from here to here how much I wanted to actually be here. So if you wanted to do this a little bit more technically, you could just be like, okay, I want this long of a top rectangle across, and this long down to my belly button or where the natural skirt is and so on and so forth. When you measure for the back of this top, of the apron I mean, 
add a couple of inches because it's a uh, you might uh, end up with it being a little bit short in the back and that doesn't look good so make it a little bit longer you can always just fold that into the uh, belt part you know a little sash you know what I mean I don't mean an actual belt there's no belt in this one <laughs> Now for the apron, I did to use the exact same, um, shit. Now for the apron, I did use the exact same lining thing to go around all of the edges, even the pockets, just because, again, I kind of can see it in photos and I was just like, I want this to be accurate as much so as I can. So yeah, there is that white little line across all of the apron, as you can see. By the way, if you are, before you do your pockets and before you sew them down, make sure you put, make sure you do like a test one. This is my kind of test one. And you can see here where the um, lining is and how I was testing how far exactly in it needed to be for it to look right when it was actually sewed and stitched down too. So make sure you test that. And I know some of y'all are gonna be like, your pockets are so large. Yes, they are. I wanted my phone to be able to fit in them. So I took two pieces of paper and some scissors and cut and cut and then taped it down until my phone could fit in that mock-up pocket. And also for sewing on pockets, there is a video down in the description link for any of you new sewers out there. The pocket design, and I am actually really happy with myself as to how this one turned out because it is so nice and what I basically did it's not hard at all is just printed off these little pieces of the symbols and then as you can see on them you're gonna see like some little black there I just laid these over the pocket when I was done with it like done with everything and then I took a fabric pen you know like the ones you draw on fabric with and I just drew it, followed the little lines. It was so simple and it turned out so nice. These are the pens that I used or that I used for that kind of stuff. Again, everything's linked down below. So yes, I did buy a whole set of pens just to use a black one. They're not too expensive. I have not tested these pens in the wash. Don't come at me if it's they're actually really really bad at being washed now for the wig so I actually just ordered a very cheap Amazon wig again everything's links down linked down below it is a super super nice wig though in the sense of it does not hurt to wear it at all because I've had some wigs that I order that just like five minutes and I've already got a massive headache but this one is so nice by the way it does not well if you wear cheap wigs from Amazon you probably understand this they have a tendency to like slip a lot and can be really hard to put on just get some freeze spray and it'll keep your wig on and it won't make anything hurt like it won't same with these contacts, like these are the actual ones that I use for the shit. I don't know why I'm pulling my eyes down like that. These are the ones that I use for it. As you can see, they're freaking amazing. They are prescription. They are so comfortable to wear, like so freaking comfortable and they're cheap. Like get these contacts, like please. They're, they're freaking amazing. They're amazing. Um, what else am I forgetting? The petticoat. Um, I used an A-line petticoat for this. It probably would have been better with a bell shape, but I didn't want it to be super, super full. So if you like that shape, go with that one. If you prefer the bell, there are plenty of great bell options out there too. It's just personal preference. The tights, again, super cheap, just from Amazon. They, I've worn them like three different times now. For different photos and TikToks and stuff, and they have not run yet, so yeah, they seem pretty good. <laughs> All right, 
right, that's it. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. I don't know that it really was without sewing. I am sorry about that. I won't do this again, I promise. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Hopefully it was helpful. If you want to see more Alice Madness cosplays, I will be doing some more. Then definitely go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I definitely will be doing more because I love this game so, so much. So till next time.